This morning, the Department of Homeland Security is launching a first-of-its-kind campaign to help keep your children safe online. It's called the No to Protect campaign. It partners with Meta, Google, and Snap, as well as major sports leagues like the NFL. It aims to provide parents and young people with information about how to prevent exploitation and abuse, how to report the incidents, and resources for victims and survivors, too. So last year, listen to this number, there were a record 36.2 million reports of suspected child sexual exploitation. That's more than twice the number that was reported in 2019. So the numbers are growing and growing quickly. Joining us for an exclusive broadcast interview about the campaign, we're very happy to tell you that Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is here, and Meta's global head of safety, that's Antigone Davis, is also here. We welcome you both. You know, we were talking uh, off, off camera. Vlad and I and the secretary said, just call me Allie. We will not be doing that. <laughs> we're, we're very glad you're here. Nice Thank to have you, Antigone. Thank you. Especially for you, um, Secretary Mayorkas, because, listen, you're in the news. Your ears must be burning, because even as we speak, they're trying to impeach you on Capitol Hill. We'll get to that in just a second. Let's start with this, pro with this, this program that you all are doing. Because you have said that you cannot... You c the words that you use, that you cannot arrest your way out of child exploitation cases. So how would this partnership work? What makes this different for you? It is a, a, an education and awareness campaign for all involved, the children themselves, their parents, the trusted adults with whom they interact, and the public at large. We just have to raise awareness and teach children and everyone around them how to recognize the predators, mm -hmm. when they are about to be victimized, how to protect themselves, and what to do uh, when, in fact, uh, they do it. Uh, so, how will you do this. that exactly? So, it is through uh, edu uh, it is through tips. Uh -huh. uh, we really share best practices about how kids can identify it. You know, when when I was a kid, my parents instructed me, "Don't talk to strangers." Exactly, you're on stranger your own danger. Walk. Yeah. This is the same principle in the online environment. Mm -hmm. Kids have to understand when someone is friending them, they have to be able to make sure that individual has good intentions and they have to do the right thing and they should check with their parents. Yeah. They really need to have safeguards in place. But quite often, as you know, Antigone, kids do not check with their parents and often the kids know more than their parents about how online works. So why did you all decide that you wanted to partner with Homeland Security? Why did Meta make this decision? Yeah, well, this builds on work that we've been doing for, for years now, aggressively trying to fight these determined criminals but they're not going away nope. and the trend is rising for things like financial sextortion and we will build all the tools that we have in place and try to protect kids from unwanted contact but it's really important that parents and teens are able to spot this type of crime. That 36 million number uh, of online exploitation cases of children, how many of those are happening on meta platforms? Uh, how big is the problem and is this your top problem? Is, is this problem number one for you? It's, it's certainly problem number one for me. This is m what my career has been dedicated to. Um, we are one of the largest reporters. That's because we take a very aggressive approach. So we use sophisticated technology across all of our platform to find and prevent this kind of um, activity. We also work with law enforcement, with DHS, to help their investigations and their prosecutions. The, the secretary mentioned stranger danger. Once upon a time, you were worried about the stranger in your community. Yeah. Now, when kids go online, the whole world is the stranger that could reach them. There's movements now in the state of Florida and also in parents groups. I'm sure you've heard about them. They've come to your desk to keep kids off social media entirely until the age of 16. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, we actually are pushing for legislation that would require parents to actually approve at download of the app for kids under the age of 16. The reason that's incredibly important, even though I know you're concerned about what parents know compared to kids, yeah. is that we have parental supervisory tools that give parents the ability to see who their teen is connecting with, who's following their teen. That type of tool is very helpful for parents, but we need to know who that parent is. Mm -hmm. and the app stores do know that and can help us in that way. So you've probably seen this, Antigone. Um, people say awareness is important, but we talk to victims, we talk to their family members, um, and the American Psychological Association issued a report yesterday, you've no doubt seen this, calling on developers like Meta to take action, and one author writes this, delegating responsibility to parents to app stores or to youth themselves does not address the vulnerabilities and harms built into the platforms. So how do you address that? 
Well, first of all, I want to say we're not trying to pass the buck to parents, but we all need to work together, whether that's DHS, whether it's us, whether it's parents to help protect kids online. We do a number of things to prevent people who are, for example, adults who are not connected from minors so that they can't message with them. But we also want parents to be aware of what this crime looks like so that they can give their kids tips. We want kids to be aware that not everybody that they interact with online is who they say they are. Yeah. If someone's pressuring you to be to share images, you don't you shouldn't feel pressure to do that. And I think probably most importantly, if something happens, please don't feel ashamed. Yeah. You are not at yeah, fault. Yeah, don't blame yourself. When we talk, Secretary, about child exploitation, can you just briefly, what exactly is that? Well, unfortunately, it can um, uh, be um, of uh, unimaginable horror in terms of uh, coaxing uh, a child mm -hmm. um, to engage. Sometimes kids don't even know they're being coaxed. That's the That's problem. right. Mm -hmm. um, th we, call, we call that a grooming. grooming yeah. In other words, luring uh, the, the child, but uh, having the child engage in sexual uh, mm -hmm. con uh, conduct uh, and then post it online. Uh, for predators yeah. uh, to observe. I should note that um, the 36.2 million tips are the reported instances, and so yeah. the problem is even greater. Yeah. And uh, to Antigone's very important point, prevention is the first line, yeah. but we also have to make sure that if something occurs, we remediate. Mm. Those children come forward, the parents come forward, and we can address it, not only to help the victim, but also to hold the perpetrators accountable. Mr. Secretary, uh, you're here with us, but meanwhile in Washington there's an effort to impeach you, and it comes at the very same time that people are waiting on the Biden administration to issue some sort of an executive order to stop the flow of people over the border, maybe by changing the asylum laws. That's the reporting anyway. W what's on the table? What's being discussed? Is that still even a possibility? So a couple, couple thoughts. Uh, first of all, as they work uh, uh, on impeachment, I work in advancing the mission of the Department of Homeland Security. That's what I've done throughout uh, this process. Um, we need Congress to pass the bipartisan legislation that a group of senators worked on. That is the enduring solution. Uh, we cannot uh, resource ourselves. We need Congress to do so. We cannot change a broken immigration system. Only Congress can do so. So there is no executive order? This? So yeah. you're pulling it off the table? Oh, no, not at all. You know, we, we, yeah. we explore options every single day. That's the responsibility of good government. We are considering options. We have been throughout. But really, the enduring solution is legislation because executive actions invariably are challenged in the courts. Yeah, you are making it clear, Mr. Secretary, you're going to continue to do your job. But I'm wondering personally, does this feel surreal? Do you feel like you have on gasoline underwear? Because you have a lot of incoming. I know you must feel, or do you feel like you're sitting in the hot seat? Because on one hand, you're negotiating with Republicans, and then on the other hand, they're trying to impeach you. How do you balance that two, knowing what they're how they feel about you and that they want you out. Gail, that is precisely why I focus on the work. Mm. That we... is precisely why I focus on the work. Speaking of the broader mission, separate from the border, we've got Israel and Iran now in an open confrontation. I think a lot of people reasonably wonder whether what's happening overseas may become a threat to yeah. the homeland. Yes. Is there an increased risk in America of some sort of attack tied to sympathies in the Middle East? Yes. We have seen an increase in anti-Semitism. We have seen an increase in Islamophobia following the October 7th terrorist attacks. There is no question, as Director Ray of the FBI and I have expressed publicly, we are in a heightened threat environment. And what we worry about is an increase in what we call domestic violent extremism, the radicalization of individuals already here, driven to violence, based on an ideology of hate. Credible threats right now as we speak? We have no known credible threats at this time, but we are in a heightened threat environment. Mm -hmm. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary.